Canon's product marketing specialist, David Perry, explains how they're able to provide 8K video and deal with all that heat. He also explains who the R5 is aimed at and which camera line it's meant to complement. So, where does this leave the 5D Mark IV? Will there be a 5D Mark V? This and more coming up. Delivering informative capability-based reviews and tutorials on camera gear, filming techniques, and content creation. Hi, it's Simon from The Ordinary Filmmaker. If you're new here, make sure you click the subscribe and like button as it really helps support my channel. And all the links to everything I talk about in this video, they're in the description down below. Tech Radar interviewed David Perry, that's Canon's product marketing specialist. We've heard from him before in the past, especially when it came to the development announcement for the 1DX Mark III. Thank you to Canon Rumors for highlighting several passages of that article. The first thing I want to talk about is the ergonomic decisions of the Canon EOS R5. You'll remember from this video here that gone is the touch bar and back is the joystick. Here's a quote from David. We've got the joystick on here instead of the multifunction bar. Everybody knows the multifunction bar on the EOS R got a mixed response. Some people really got on with it and some people really couldn't get on with it at all. So maybe going with this is a safer bet. More people are used to the multifunction controller because this is a 5 series. More people at that kind of level expect functions similar to what you get on a 5D, he added. So does this mean that the EOS R5 is a 5D camera? It's a 5D product to replace the 5D Mark IV successor? To be a mirrorless version of the 5D Mark V? We talked about this many times on uh, this channel, and many of you have commented saying this blows the 1DX Mark III out of the water. This is obviously a replacement for the 1DX Mark III. Others have said, myself included, that no, I don't think so because Canon has a certain way of naming products. One is the highest number you can give to any product. It's the top of the line, it's the prime, it's the king. And as we go down, we drop in price and we drop in functionality or capability. The 5D is by no means a, an entry-level camera, it's a professional camera. It's primarily been a photographer's camera. But Canon has said in the past that the EOS R, F platform, are, they're making it more to be not just photographic centric, but also video centric. So you're getting a hybrid. The only difference is you're going to see it in maybe the, the one, uh, not the 1D, but the mirrorless equivalent of the 1D is going to be more of a sports shooter type camera and less on video. And the high megapixel version, which we think could be called the R3, will obviously be more photocentric. But the 5D in this iteration, the R5, I should say, sorry, the R5 is going to be more balanced between photo and video. David Perry goes on to say, it's aimed at the level of the market. This isn't a replacement for the 5D Mark IV or anything like that, but this is a mirrorless 5 series. It's aimed at that segment of the market, which makes sense because in film days we had the EOS 5, then the digital DSLRs, we had the 5D, and now we have the R5, so it's at that same sort of level. A little bit of marketing in there. It's not meant as a replacement, but it's supposed to be a mirrorless equivalent. The R5 is by no means an equivalent to the 5D Mark IV. I think what David's hinting at is there may very well be a 5D Mark V and that this mirrorless R5 is meant to complement that. So if that's what I'm reading correctly here, the 5D Mark V is still on and it's going to be very similar in features to what we have in the R5. The next thing that came up was about heat dissipation. The R5 is a very small camera. We've all seen it. Um, I've got several photos up here that you guys have been watching throughout this video, and it's tiny. I don't see a huge vent on the back like Panasonic did with the S1H. And that is a pretty big vent, and it's got a fan in there, so it's going to make a bit of noise. Here we don't have a vent. We don't have a fan unless there's one internal, but what's the point of a fan without some sort of venting? It just really doesn't make any sense. We've been doing this for a while now, and we've learned a lot of techniques to dissipate heat on other products that we have in our lineup. For example, being able to move components around and being able to have them further away from each other, and being able to dissipate heat using different materials has been something we've been pretty proud of on other products. This is something we've learned using both our cinema and our video cinema EOS series with that technology as well. So there's a lot of technology that we know is coming together and giving us the ability to really step up these specifications. A lot to unpack there, but 
Not really. It's marketing speak. Of course they're trying different things. Of course they're moving things around and trying different materials. Uh, maybe even trying different voltage levels. Who knows? There's no real technical details in there other than they're aware, yes, that heat is an issue and they've found a way to solve it. Just like they found a way to put 8K and put IBIS in this camera, something that Canon hasn't done and nobody else has put 8K in a video camera yet. At CES 2020, yes, Sharp was prototyping a model. It was a very early prototype, but here we have Canon ready to announce a real product. So I, I don't really know how they plan on doing this, but yes, 8K video is real. Um, they've engineered things a little bit to dissipate heat. I do expect there to be some record time limits on 8K. I just don't know what they're going to be. We don't have the full specifications. So what about availability? Well, I've been saying for several weeks, according to sources, according to Canon of Rumors, that we were expecting a March announcement. Well, that's changed. The announcement is now expected to be sometime around May or June. And availability? Well, it was supposed to be July. And the big push for that July announcement was because of the 2020 Summer Olympics. And Canon wants to get this stuff out. So when we're shooting the Olympics, you're going to see Canon everywhere. They want everybody to have these cameras in their hands. Well, late last night, we got an announcement that, the, that Japan is officially um, delaying or postponing the 2020 Olympics. We don't have a date. Uh, but this is from Dick Pound, who's uh, with the Olympics. And most likely, we're probably going to see this happen sometime in 2021. So that really takes a lot of the date pressures off. And with the worsening condition in the world, uh, Italy's, oh my God, uh, Italy's having a really tough time. Uh, cases are ramping up in the United States. Uh, where I live here, we have um, states of emergency throughout the country. We have mandatories work from home. And the prime minister came out yesterday and was very strict in saying that if, if you don't stop congregating in large groups, um, everything's on the table. There could be War Measures Act, there could be emergency measures, people could be arrested, people could be fined. We don't know. They didn't really hint. He just said all the tools are on the table. So the world is taking this very seriously. So now this is where we start to see the pressures on the dates. Um, like I said, we do have an announcement aimed at around May or June, but as far as when it's going to be released, that's really hard to tell at this point. What do you guys think? Is this an exciting announcement? I, I personally, I'm quite excited by this. It's confirmed things I've been saying in the past. I've said that the R5 is primarily aimed at or at the same level as the 5D Mark IV. And the 5D, um, uh, 5D, I keep saying the 5D. The R5 is a mirrorless replacement for the 5D Mark V. So outside of the Olympics, there's many other things in here that I'm very interested in. What, one of the things that David Perry said is that the R5 isn't designed to replace the 5D. Well, if we look at the R5 capabilities based on what has been announced and what has been leaked, the R5 is an order of magnitude above the Canon 5D Mark IV by at least two levels. It's two generations ahead of it. So that tells me that there's going to be a 5D Mark V. We've heard nothing since late last year about the 5D Mark IV, but back in around October, November of last year, we were hearing that there were going to be a 1DX Mark III and a 5D Mark V. And sure enough, the 1DX Mark III has come out, but we've heard very little on the 5D Mark V. So based on what David Perry is saying, I really think there's room for that. Otherwise, the, the R5 clearly does replace the current 5D Mark IV. Will it have IBIS? I don't know. Maybe not. Um, the 1DX3 didn't have IBIS. Its video capabilities are stepped up, but not nearly as good as what's in the R5. So I do expect the R5 to have a few more features and more capabilities than the 5D Mark IV. So that's really good news. As far as availability and announcements this year, at this point, I think everything's up in the air. Um, as, as much as Canon wants to keep to its product dates, there are a lot of things happening, even as cases in China start to ramp down and production starts to increase. Uh, is there really a lot of demand in the rest of the world? Are the supply chains going to be intact? Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of different factors here, and it's almost impossible to speculate. So my goal going forward is just to report as, what I'm hearing as it happens, as I get updates, to report what is happening as it happens, 
and to report updates as they occur. I just heard about this information early this morning and I wanted to quickly get this video out to you guys before I start my work day. Um, like many of you, I'm working from home and um, it, it's a very strange feeling because I'm, I, I'm feeling I'm getting a sense of cabin fever. Can't really go outside and when I do go outside, I'm usually limited to my backyard and front yard because I don't know who out there might have it. Uh, there are cases of the virus showing up in and around my community now, so there's a bit more sense of urgency and I'm a little bit more concerned about this than I was a couple of months ago because at the time we were being told this thing wouldn't be any worse than a bad case of the flu. Well, it's this thing is certainly a whole lot worse than a bad case of the few, flu if you, if you get it really strong. So uh, I wish you guys stay safe, stay well. Um, thank you so much for tuning in to watch my channel and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you for watching The Ordinary Filmmaker. All equipment used and notes are placed in the description box, show more box, or down arrow thingy next to the title on the mobile app.